March 3rd, 2008. March 4th. Oh, well then I can't state the date, obviously. <laughs> Is it the 4th? Yeah, yeah it's 4th already. Uh-oh, you've been working on the 3rd. Yeah, I screwed up. There's no clear definition of what internet addiction is. In fact, what we call internet addiction is not even agreed upon. It's sometimes referred to as internet abuse, compulsive internet use, pathological internet use. None of these titles or definitions are really agreed upon professionally. Um, my guess is it's going to end up, once it's more formally recognized, and we're right at the edge of that, probably being called compulsive internet use. That's my guess. The concept of addiction, even the word addiction is not technically a psychiatric term. There are two terms that refer to behaviors or substances that are, quote unquote, that people become addicted to. And they're usually referred to as either abuse or dependency. Certainly people abuse it and overuse it. Uh, a lot of people overuse it. Some people abuse it. And then there's a smaller percentage, probably about 6%, that compulsively use it to a point where it interferes with their life. The word addiction kind of implies that there is a tolerance or withdrawal from not using it. Interestingly enough, we do see some degree of tolerance and withdrawal with internet technology, that people do get upset when they can't get online or they don't get their daily fix of their email, their gaming, the pornography, whatever they're doing online. Internet addiction or compulsive internet use most likely alters brain chemistry, but we're not sure because there haven't been a lot of studies yet that looked at that. In fact, there are no controlled studies that I'm aware of that have looked specifically at internet use. But we do know from other studies that, that have been done with television, with gambling, with other addictions, that there are alterations in most likely dopamine, uh, serotonin, certainly increases in the endorphins and enkephalins, the pleasure chemicals that are associated with pain reduction and with overall sense of well-being and pleasure. The whole internet operates on a variable ratio reinforcement schedule, which is a fancy way of saying the internet is a slot machine. The whole internet is a slot machine. But email is a great example of that, or eBay or any of the other things. For instance, when you check your email or look at your email, every once in a while you get a good one. You don't know when, you don't know where, and you don't know what it will be, but you know every once in a while, because you do, every once in a while you get a good, a good response, or you get you know, that uh, free offer for something that you want, or you get the notification that your order from Amazon was shipped, or you, you know, get an email from a friend or a family member that you're looking forward to getting, or a job offer. What the brain does with that information is that it, it reinforces your connection to that search. So, it, and because it's intermittent and variable and unpredictable, that is the most resistant form of reinforcement to extinction. That's why people check their email 50 times a day. And they will do that till they drop. Variable ratio reinforcement patterns are directly linked to pleasurable patterns of behavior and that people will literally engage in those behaviors till they exhaust. When people joke about email addiction or checking emails over and over or texting, it, it, it literally is an addiction in the sense that gambling is. The only way to sort of fight it is to make a choice not to go on that day. That's the only way it'll happen. The internet has changed society in an immeasurable number of ways, and, and, and many of them are good. I mean, the internet is one of the things that's important to talk about when you talk about the internet is that it's not a negative experience that it, it, it makes life, uh, in some ways, easier to manage, especially when you look at shopping or getting information and the less of the, uh, reducing the need to get in your car and go somewhere. And when you're paying $3.50 a gallon for gasoline, that's a big issue. When it comes to the internet, convenience is the mother of invention, not necessity. People love it because it's convenient and there's no delay or threshold to cross to engage in the activity, whether it be shopping or finding some information or consuming something that is very stimulating like sexual content. What did I, where did I, we do have access to information and content that we've never had access in, in, uh, uh, to information before. And that can be dangerous. Uh, for instance, in the area of sexuality, there is, because of that reduced threshold and the breadth of information that's available online, People are getting into stuff that they perhaps should not get into and having ne a very serious negative impact in their lives. So that's one of the problems that we're seeing.
what we found in those original studies, and there have been lots of variables that we looked at, but the, essentially that about 6% of people use it to a point where they're compulsive in some very serious way. Relationships, legal status, social status, health, well-being. State the date for us. March 3rd, 2008. March 4th. Oh. March 4th, 2008. Oh, well then I can't state the date, obviously. <laughs> Is it the 4th? Yeah, yeah it's the 4th already. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, I screwed. There's no clear definition of what internet addiction is. In fact, what we call internet addiction is not even agreed upon. It's sometimes referred to as internet abuse, compulsive internet use, pathological internet use. None of these titles or definitions are really agreed upon professionally. Um, my guess is it's going to end up, once it's more formally recognized, and we're right at the edge of that, probably being called compulsive internet use. That's my guess. The concept of addiction, even the word addiction is not technically a psychiatric term. There are two terms that refer to behaviors or substances that are, quote unquote, that people become addicted to. And they're usually referred to as either abuse or dependency. Certainly people abuse it and overuse it. Uh, a lot of people overuse it. Some people abuse it. And then there's a smaller percentage, probably about 6%, that compulsively use it to a point where it interferes with their life. The word addiction kind of implies that there is a t 